Now let's stand up and welcome Master Ching Han. Ladies and gentlemen, now I give my microphone to Mr. Li. Let him introduce our Master Ching Hai. Mr. Li, please. Who is Mr. Li? Ah. Master, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Mr. Li. Uh, I'll be uh, the host for the rest of the, this evening. Uh, before we go into introduction, we will have uh, uh, flower offering and the fruit offering. Let's have that start. The flower offering and the fruit offering, please. And a fruit offering. She from Boston. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this? This one also Boston? She from Boston too. Boston? Yeah. <laughs> this is Miss Tan. She just got initiated at Harvard University. And she will present uh, uh, five minutes uh, about her initiation experience. Not right now. Give me five more minutes. Okay. <laughs> Stand there. Wait. Yeah, wait. <laughs> well, New York. I like New York. Uh, I woke up this morning, my car disappeared. <laughs> it took me two hours to locate my car. Somebody tore my car away. And I have to pay $155. Plus the fine. You guys, I have, you have my sympathy here. But anyway, I like New York City. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the next 10 minutes, I would like to uh, give you a brief introduction about Master Ching Hai. Uh, there's a lot of story about her. Uh, I'm not going to into detail. Uh, Master Ching Hai was born in Vietnam. And her parents were the Catholic. Uh, her grandma was a Buddhist. So she has that type of background since then. And when she was a child, even seven years old, she read a lot of religious type of book. Seven years old kid, it's unbelievable. And from there, she went to Germany, West Germany. She got married over there. 
she helping uh, she was helping a lot of people particularly like Vietnamese people and she also working for the Red Cross over there uh, then from there she decide instead of just help people one by one she want to help all the people on the earth in order to become a person like that she figure out it's only Buddha or only God can do that kind of job so she decided to leave home and get enlightened and she hope everybody will get enlightened on the earth include a group of people here you are so lucky to be so closer to her because in Taiwan thousands thousands of people all the seminar all packed up before I go into that she became a Buddha and then she went to Taiwan the reason she went to Taiwan you can ask her during the question and answering uh, period uh, she didn't go into public until two years ago it's kind of a fairy tale it was a, a Taihong night uh, which means like uh, just like a hurricane here in the USA a group of people went to see her they all had the same dream they all dream the Guanyin Buddha that tell them there's a real master here and she can teach you she can teach all of you and get enlightened those people went to a small temple that temple is not famous at all even myself I don't even know there's a such temple exist master was there and he was humble he was working very hard just for people anyway since then she start going to public within one and a half years there are thousands thousands of the disciples include the attendants here they are all this they are all her disciples too I was surprised they come over here to assist the master here they pay the food pay the air flight ticket all by themselves the master didn't support them at all they come here they just want to help the master to rescue more people here particularly in USA and South America before she come over here she went to mainland China from mainland China she went to uh, Malaysia Hong Kong and then uh, you see Berkeley right before the earthquake star was a 4 30 in the afternoon she rushed everybody into the airplane 4 30 the earthquake start at a 5 or 1 as I remember for the last earthquake she present two day seminar at UCLA and from there she went to uh, Boston uh, Harvard University for two days seminar and come over here tonight this weekend tomorrow we have the seminar too that will be one o'clock between one o'clock and five o'clock from here she's going to Brazil and Argentina Costa Rica Panama City and she is going back to uh, Los Angeles from there and then back to Taiwan and finish uh, the whole world tour here there's uh, so much things I can tell I can say I don't want to waste people's uh, time here particularly uh, in conclusion I would say she is a living saint a living Buddha a living God there's uh, so many evidence so many evidence can prove that there's so much story I'm not going to into detail here so here's our master we gratefully that she will spend the whole weekend here hope you all will come back tomorrow too all right thank you very much uh, the next five minutes miss Tan would like to address her own experience during the initiation in Boston at Harvard uh, miss Tan
Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you tonight? Uh, I'm Eileen Tian. I came from Boston. We drove this morning to get here, and uh, I wasn't prepared, as you can see, to speak on the stage, but I'm more than happy now to do it. Uh, I'm, I, I was one of many who were initiated on October 29th, Sunday, in Boston. Uh, many of us had wonderful experience, and for those who cannot come tonight from Boston, and for those uh, who will be here tomorrow, ask me to send their love to Master and to all of you tonight. Uh, they also asked me to send uh, their thankness to the master uh, because many of them had a wonderful experience already. Uh, especially Dr. Barton, he asked me to pass a special message to master. He said he has previous commitment for this weekend to devote all his time to children in need, so he couldn't come to New York to listen to a lecture. And he said he probably will not have a chance to meet you before you leave United States. But he has decided that he will make a special trip next year to visit you in Taiwan. Uh, in summary, my personal feeling was, I think Master provided us um, with passwords, which will enable us to log in to God and to the universe uh, through ourselves. We can get to where we want. Uh, on the way, Master will be always with us. I'm sure it's hard work, but with her, with the help from Master, it should be fun and enjoyable. So I want to say thank you to Master again, and uh, I'm so happy for all of us that have a chance to listen to Master's speech tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tan. Uh, Ms. Tan, is, uh, she has an MBA in computer engineering. She's working at a uh, digital company. I'm sorry, I didn't give you a little bit of introduction about her. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I have another five minutes to share our own experience with you? Uh, as you know, my name is Mr. Lee. Um, everybody call me Lee. Uh, it's much easier. Uh, I am just like an ordinary person here. Probably most of you it's just like me, always wondering why we are here, where shall we go. I didn't think of such problems and questions until I was graduated from uh, Worcester Polytech. I came into this country in 1979. Originally, I'm from Taiwan. And after I received my master's degree, I was working at a hospital, uh, University of Massachusetts Medical Center, as a chief clinical or somebody called Chief Biomedical Engineer for seven and a half years over there. And you know, when you are, was working there, everything went so well, and you thought that you control the whole world. I mean, you can control your own life. Uh, I was working in a hospital. Every morning, I went in there, nine o'clock, have a cup of coffee at 9.30. I went to uh, operating room and then internship care unit. I see a lot of people suffering. And sometimes I run into a dead person, a dead patient over there, and a lot of friends you know, around the, the person and crying. So I just wondering how come so much different? How come I'm so well? How come they are suffering? Why? I start asking myself that question. Then, 
I said, probably something I need to do because I wasn't happy at all. So we stopped to buy houses, like everybody want to buy houses. Now one house, you feel happy for another probably couple of months. And then so what? So we keep buying houses. And we say we be happy, we be healthy. That's all we need. Just like everybody here. Looks like we got everything, but it's emptiness. So I wasn't happy at all. So I said, I need, some, I need something. I need a religion, maybe. But which one is suitable for me, particularly? I'm a stopper engineer. I'm real, real stubborn. I keep asking myself, how can I prove there's a living Buddha, there's a God? Where they coming from, I don't know, but at least I want to get some response. I want that kind of religion, or not even called religion. It's the truth which we need. So I was searching for a religion that which can you know, I, feel, I will feel happy for the rest of my life. But before I choose a religion, I want to prove it because I'm an engineer. How can I prove it? I spent one year, the whole year. I was depressed. No way I can prove it. And one day there was, there was a doctor working at the University of Massachusetts Medical Center. It's a lady. She said, Lee, why are you so depressed? I said, well, I was trying to prove a living Buddha, a spiritual, that which I can't prove it. Then she said, Lee, you are a computer engineer. You are an electronic engineer. Let me ask you one question. Did you see electricity? I saw I'm pretty good at that. You know, electricity, we use every day. But can you prove it? Sure, why not? When you touch it, you got zapped. You feel there's something there. But can you see it? Unless you turn a light bulb, you turn a switch on, the light bulb is on. Share the lights for you. I mean, shining the light for you. Then you know, oh, that's electricity. How about radio frequency waveforms? The TV waveform, radio station waveforms. Can you see it? You just cannot see it, but it's there. Now, when you turn on the TV, it's there. And you know it's there, but you just can't see it. Now the living Buddha is here. Can you see it? You just can't. You have to feel it. I'm not going to go into detail, just another two minutes. So. I was looking for a religion, which I did. I found one, but I couldn't get any response. I don't see any light bulb at all. Then I quit my job. It's a very, very good job I quit because I wasn't happy at all. There wasn't any answer for me. I proved something. The light is on, but I couldn't see the light. I couldn't find a real light bulb. I quit my job, established my own company. I thought that, that will keep me busy for a while. At least I'd be satisfied for a while. Then I met my partner, which we are doing business together. And he bring me, he gave me an introduction about Master Ching Hai. And that time was just curious. That was 1988 in April. He mentioned that Master Ching Hai is coming. She came into uh, UCLA, she, uh, um, excuse me, when she came into uh, San Francisco uh, in the middle of May, and was, I remember it was a mem memorial weekend, May 29th. We flew to uh, San Jose with my wife. We went over there just for vacation, and Master Ching had present two days seminar there. We thought that probably we only want to go one seminar, then we will spend the rest of our time in San Francisco because my wife never gone to uh, San Francisco. And something happened on both of us. The seminar went just one third. Just went one third. I decide to be initiated. I hold my wife's hand, 
this is the master that I want, I've been searching for. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing I can prove to you unless you experience it. As far as initiation, the master later on will explain a little bit more. You don't have to change your religion at all. You can stay where you are. In Taiwan, there are Buddhists. There are Catholic people. There are Christian people. They all got initiated with the Master Ching Hai. And they stay where they are. Because what Master Ching Hai teach you is not religious. It's a Guan Yin method, teach you how to do meditation right. Also, share the truth of the universe with you. So since then, we got initiated. And so many things happened on both of us, myself and my wife. We were just like a, like a reborn person. And I'm so grateful we, have, we met Master Ching Hai. And we are so happy every day. Thank you very much, Master Ching Hai. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your honor to present Master Ching Hai to you. Thank you. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> Let us join in a few minutes prayers to your own God, <laughs> or your own good self, or your own Buddha nature. Pray that our seminar will be a, a helpful time for you. Thank you. So, I will speak English, yes? Is that all right with the Chinese people? <laughs> yeah, I think all of you understand English. Also, we have so many tapes and books in Chinese. And I think I speak English for the benefit of our American brothers and sisters. Yes. <coughs> Is the translation all right? Yeah. If you do not understand English, please put on the earphones. If any problem, please raise your hand so that our assistants can help you. But my English is so simple. <laughs> Everyone will be able to understand. Well, brothers and sisters, you are the children of the great intelligence, the great wisdom. I suppose you do know something about yourself. You do feel it sometimes about the greatness within your own heart, about the father or the mother, which is the creator, or what we call the Buddha nature, from which we came and to which we will return, if we so desire. There is a free will absolutely free for each individual to choose between this world and 
the higher kingdom. Most of people prefer to stay here, and some people prefer to go home, go back to the kingdom of God or to the Buddha's land. Now we have the right to stay here or to go back to the kingdom of God. It's just that let us not be deluded about what we want. If we truly prefer to stay here in this earth, to be useful to humanity and the earthly citizen, then we must also consider some condition without which the life, uh, our life, our, ju- our sojourn in this world will be not very pleasant. And if we wish to go back to the kingdom of God or to become a Buddha, to go back to the Buddha's land, then we should also consider some factors which will enable us to go there. Now let us first speak of uh, the the conditions which enable us to stay in this world and lead a comfortable, pleasant life in case some people prefer to stay. Mm. Our planet is a very beautiful, uh, I'd say, a spaceship, <laughs> we could say spaceship, yeah, carries a lot of sentient beings in the mid air mm, and circle around. Mm. Our planet gives us a lot of comfort and joys. Mm give us a lot of treasure and sustain our life through many ways and means. But then we also have a little duty toward our Mother Earth, also to help her mm, to uh, remain in such a powerful position so that she may be able to help us. Now, in order to do so, uh, all the religions have taught us what to do. But I may take the opportunity, and with your permission, to remind you a little bit. Also, for the sake of those who will listen to the tapes of this seminar in the future, please do not uh, have the opinion that I will be your lecturer or teacher or master or whatever. Forget all about this. <laughs> just take me as your brother, sister, daughter, just a well-wisher, a sincere person who would like to, uh, I'll say, offer whatever she has in her best ability. Yes. It, it, it is just like if you are an engineer, then you try to help the society with your knowledge of techniques. If you are a doctor, a physician, then you try to help the society uh, by elevating the suffering of humanity, uh, treating their sickness, etc. Yeah? <laughs> so I was born with a tendency to have spiritual knowledge. And as much as, as I attain some of this spiritual knowledge, I am obliged to feedback. Mm. Just like what we have learned in college about machinery or medical treatment, we have to offer back again to the society later on. Is that not so? Mm. So I'm only doing, doing my duty And I'm grateful to you that you have given me the permission and the welcome 
atmosphere to do my job. So in order to uh, put our society back in a pleasurable condition, uh, we should also ob observe certain precepts and mutual respect and understanding. The way most of uh, the people uh, live 